Okay, so today we're going to learn about um, something called gene, gene linkage, which is in chapter 11.4. Um, so something called gene linkage and gene maps. So how can two alleles from different genes be inherited together? Uh, we're going to be learning more in a bit about this, but alleles of different genes tend to be inherited together from one generation to the next when those genes are located on the same chromosome. So um, we heard about Morgan on the last um, show slideshow. But he did uh, research with fruit flies about the principle of gene linkage. So he identified more than 50 um, fruit fly genes um, and discovered that many of them appeared to like be linked together in ways that seemed to violate that idea of principle of independent assortment where genes um, are inherited, um, that one being inherited does not affect another one being inherited, which is like that idea with like flipping a coin, 50-50 shot. Um, so Maury actually found this violation that Mendel originally thought of. So independent assortment doesn't always happen, so we're going to see why. So for example, Morgan used a fly with reddish eyes, um, reddish-orange eyes, and miniature wings in a series of test crosses. Um, what he saw was that the genes for those two traits were almost always inherited together. So if a fly had miniature wings, it usually also had reddish-orange eyes. So only rarely did the genes separate from each other. So they're kind of like linked together. So Morgan and his associates observed so many genes that they were inherited together that before long, they could group all the flies' genes into four linkage groups. Um, so, so four big major groups where a bunch of genes would be inherited together, so four different groups that were like that. Um, the linkage groups are sorted independently of one another, but all the genes in one group were inherited together. So it's like four big groups of friends. The one big group always went with each other, but if you looked at two separate groups of friends, they didn't always go to certain places to with each other. But the people within those big groups went together everywhere, with, you know, to a certain place. So as it turned out, the fruit fly had has four linkage groups because it has four pairs of chromosomes. So that's the idea of genes on the same chromosome being inherited together. Uh, Morgan's findings led to two remarkable conclusions. First, that each chromosome is actually a group of linked genes. And then second, it is it is the chromosomes that assort independently, not the individual genes on them. So alleles of different genes tend to be inherited together when those genes, again, are located on the same chromosomes. Um, this led to something called gene mapping. So later, early 1900s, um, student Sturdivant wondered if the frequency of crossing over in prophase one of meiosis between genes during um, meiosis might be a clue to the genes locations. Um, he reasoned that the farther apart two genes were on a chromosome, the more likely it would be that a crossover event would occur between them. So what he came up with is that if two genes are close together, then crossovers between them should be rare. Um, and if two genes are far apart, then crossovers between them should be more common. So if they're close together, then they're not going to be um, the two genes that are close together. They'll usually be inherited together. It won't have like one crossed over and the other one didn't because um, they're so close together. But when they're farther apart, it's very li more likely that one gene will go on one chromosome, one of the homologous chromosomes, and the other gene that's farther apart, again, will go on the other homologous chromosome, and then there would be some separation during meiosis too. So um, by this reasoning, he could use the frequency of crossing over between genes to determine their distances from each other. Um, so based on the frequency of how many times they cross over, that's more likely they would be far apart. So you can kind of get an idea of where genes are located on a chromosome based on this frequency. So Sturdivant gathered lab data and presented a gene map showing the relative locations of each known gene on the um, Drosophila um, chromosomes of the fruit fly, or Drosophila, sorry. Um, here's the, the gene map here, so we can see all these different um, types of genes that the fruit fly has on chromosome 2. So his method has been used to construct a gene map ever since this discovery. So as kind of a 
see if we understand how um, gene mapping works and the frequency and which ones would be inherited together more likely. Um, so do we think that the black body, so here's black body gene, with reduced bristles would be inherited together more likely than the oh, than the black body curved wings or vice versa? Do we think black body and curved wings would be inherited um, together more likely than black body and reduced? Okay, so if you picked that black body and reduced bristles would be inherited together more likely, then you are correct. And that's, again, the reason why um, is because that they're closer together on the chromosome. So that's why we see rare amounts of um, crossing over between those two genes. Um, and that's why they were mapped out that way to be closer together. Um, probably was seen that black body and curved wings were um, more frequently undergoing a crossover meaning black body and curved wings were not inherited so much together. So that's why this map has black body a little further away than curved wings compared to the reduced bristles. All right, that is it.